Welcome to further channel of analysis, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I want to say thank you very much for your continued support. Ever since the ch uh, channel started, you've rendered support to this channel. And if you are watching for the first time, I want to kindly request you to hit that subscribe button. And when you subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell so that whenever I do a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. The second request, ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to like our videos. Liking a video is very important because the more a video gets many likes, the more YouTube will recommend it to many viewers. And please share them. And this is the only way you can support the channel so that we can grow together. Again, I'm much humbled. Now, the former CEO of Safaricom, Mr. Michael Joseph, is a man under siege. Michael Joseph is a man who the Kenya Kwanzaa team, led by the Deputy President, Mr. Rigadi Gashagwa, believe that is at the height of all the problems that are facing the KQ. Remember, a few days after Mr. Rigadi uh, just took oath of office, he went uh, on record as saying that KQ was under state capture. And he mentioned that if you look at the airlines, the KQ is ever full. That is what he was saying, that the airplanes are ever full and KQ is even much more expensive con uh, compared to other airlines. But Mr. Gadi uh, uh, says that they are ever broke and they are ever running into losses. And I thought for a while, do you think that uh, the deputy president has a point? Do you think this is something that we can look at? Because I was just going through uh, some records here, and I realized that uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the airline was almost uh, stalled, and they sought for bailout from the government, and the government released 5 billion Kenyan shillings when the board of directors uh, promised that they were going to do everything within their reach to ensure that they resuscitate the pride of Africa. This did not happen. And then in the middle of the corona pandemic and immediately after the government now opened up and uh, flights were allowed now to travel to different countries, the airline complained again that they had suffered losses as a result of the COVID because there were no passengers uh, flying in and out of the country. And uh, it was debated in parliament and parliamentarians did, uh, did not agree. They disagreed with the fact that every now and then uh, KQ would come and say that they are suffering losses and the government pumps in more money. And the then finance minister, Ukuri Atani, in public uh, came and said that they were not going to accept any bailout to KQ because it, every, everyone was uh, complaining about government siphoning more money into KQ. But then after giving uh, this assurance publicly, Treasury secretly gave 8 million Kenya shillings to KQ. And then another 2, uh, that was 2 billion and another 2 billion came from the transport sector. So it was totaling to 10 billion Kenya shillings. And the KQ management were complaining that they had a number of flights that were stalled and, uh, and broken down, I think, as they wanted to maintain maintenance because for those aircrafts to be grounded for some months or years as a result of the COVID, they needed to be maintained before they started flying in and out. They also explained that they had a number of bills that they had not paid, uh, security, water, and electricity bill. So this 10 billion Kenya shillings was given to them I guess the chagrin of many Kenyans who really said that this is unacceptable. We can't keep on pumping money. In fact, very many uh, specialists said that we could uh, try and emulate what is happening in other countries so that we can look for a permanent solution for the KQ rather than every, every now and then pumping in more taxpayers' money, they make losses, then they come back, they come back again. And may, very many people thought that there is a sinister motive. And KQ said that they were undertaking a few measures, like they reduced uh, staff and they said that this was going to help. But ladies and gentlemen, 
till now you can see that the pilots downed their tools. The pilots are saying that there is certain amount of money that they were, uh, they were being given, it's called Provident Fund, and it stopped during the, the, the COVID. And under their collective bargaining agreement, it was agreed that after the COVID and when the economy revamps, kidogo kidogo, this money will be given back. But the argument of the KQ now is that if you if the CEO is saying or the management is that they're saying they have not they are rotated on their grounds financially and they're saying that the earliest they can start giving this money to their pilots is in 2024, ladies and gentlemen. Remember we are in 2022. So they are telling the pilots to wait until 20. 24. So this is something that very many people are arguing about. Uh, some are saying that the pilots are testing, that is what the transport minister said, that they are testing the new administration. While others say that they have a genuine reason. But I want to submit to you that during the campaigns, even before they came, they ascended to power, the Kenya Kwanzaa team had crafted a plan to kick out all the board of management because that story is also carried in the star uh, newspaper and they're saying that up to date if you ask the president the deputy even more himself who is now uh, putting a face like he wants to resolve the kq you know this kind of strike in their heart they believe that there are a clique of people who are allied to the former regime who are still benefiting from some money that they feel, they, they feel there's a lot of corruption within KQ. And they say, if you, if you know, the KQ has got some number of aircrafts, but they are also operating under the lease management. Leasing where other companies that have got aeroplanes or aircrafts would give them or would lease uh, some aeroplanes to them or aircraft, and then they will be paying. Now apparently they were paying uh, a fixed uh, amount of money where we maybe the the, 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 the leaser and the leasee. Well, someone will give KQ or a company will give the KQ some aircraft or aeroplanes, and they say that maybe within a year we'll be paying 10 billion. But Michael Joseph uh, be, uh, says that they reviewed this and they are now paying uh, at an hourly basis. That when you fly. Uh, maybe goes in and out, they, they will be calculating on an hourly basis and Michael Joseph believes that this was to reduce losses. But the Deputy President disagrees. They believe that the whole team, the board of, uh, of directors, must go. And this is the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why at the height of this strike, the CEO of the country, President William Ruto, did not say anything but decided to fly out. Despite the fact that there are uh, reports indicating that as a result of that strike, Kenya is losing 300 million Kenya shillings per day. I was just trying to imagine if you compare the 300 million Kenya shillings that we are losing every day and the amount of money that the 400 workers are demanding in terms of uh, provident fee, I believe that if you compare the losses that we have uh, gone through for the three days of, uh, of, 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 of uh, the strike and it's still continuing, a quick uh, calculation will tell you that if strike, this strike goes for a week, then it is more than, far much more than what the pilot should have been paid if there was an amicable solution. The other thing that I feel is really wanting is the way they are trying to handle this. They go to court, they issue threats, and I, I just I think it is today I, I read that the courts ordered the pilots to go to work fast before their case is hard. And it's, it's, it's a, a question of being between a rock and a hard place. You are demanding for your rights, and that's why you downed your tools, and you are told, go back to work before we start negotiations. The CEO said that the negotiations are over, but the airline, uh, the union uh, that represent the pilots said they are ready for negotiations. But at the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Kenya Kwanzaa team and the ODM team for the first time have found a reason to support these strikes because it is said there are secret faces that are pushing for these strikes. Now the Kenya Kwanzaa team, led by the topmost management, the, the, the 
president and the deputy president believe that this clique or the, the group of management was appointed by the former regime and so they want all of them to go. The only thing that is worrying me, because I think they have a point, as I indicated to you, there have been a lot of bailout to KQ every now and then. They need to find a permanent solution, period. The only worrying uh, thing here is, are we taking away those who we feel are corrupt so that we can also appoint our own cartels? Because that is something that can really happen. You argue that Mr. X or Team X is corrupt. And then when you kick them out, you bring Team, uh, team Y. Then Team Y will be more corrupt, but this time around, they are your people. Because that is something that has been happening. And uh, very many experts are saying that in as much as uh, our deputy president and the government has a point that we need to relook at uh, what is happening in, in KQ and get a permanent solution, we need to guard against a method of removing cartels and uh, placing your own cartels. Now, the Kenya Kwanza team will not resolve this. They want the CEO to look bad and they're painting the whole board of management in bad faith so that by the end of it they will say that look, these people cannot even afford to manage something like a strike. They can't manage this team and uh, it will be a lot of uproar and in the long run they will be calling for the CEO to go they will be calling for the whole board of management because they will be giving Kenyans a chance to air the, uh, uh, their views. And they will, be, they, they, in a way, they are setting up the Kenyan Mwanaichi against the management. Because if you look at what is happening, very many people are saying that it is wrong to issue threats to those who are striking because under the labor laws, downing of tools or industrial action is always allowed. And this is the reason why you see what we go, what you think, what we say, a ghost law. The president is not really very keen on resolving this. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if the president would come in today, call for an urgent meeting with Mr. Murkomen and the and the Labour CS and the manage, the KQ management and the union, this meeting will last for only thirty minutes, and they will resolve everything. The deputy president gave a warning and very many people said that it was a reckless talk, yet he was really communicating what uh, a collective opinion that they have as a Kenya Kwanza team. If you look at the body language of uh, Mr. Murkomen, we have a team that have done uh, their tools, yet Mr. Murkomen is releasing uh, some alleged contracts about the SGR. That tells you, that alone tells you that he's not very serious about resolving the whole matter. And the ODM uh, or the Kenya, the Azimio or One Kenya Alliance are also supporting this strike. Because they, they, they feel that the government in place is incapable, is incapable of very many things. That very many, all the promises that they gave to Kenyans have fallen to the ground. They have not implemented even one. So we are, uh, like my friend uh, sometimes tells me, we are in the middle of nowhere. The Kenya Kwanza team are supporting the strike for a different reason to paint uh, the government in, pla uh, in place. I mean, the Azimio team is supporting this strike to paint the government in place in bad faith, that they are incapable. When the government itself, the Kenya Kwanza team, is also there, there, there are some MPs and some prominent guys who are supporting the strike because they want in the long run, they want the whole body, the management of KQ to go so that they have one of their own in that place. And so it is a unique kind of affair where the, the, the Zimio and One Kenya Alliance have found themselves supporting the same idea. The only other uh, idea that they have supported together is when they want to increase their salaries. We are in the middle of this and I don't think we will have a solution very soon. Because it all seems that the Kenya Kwanza have got a hidden agenda to kick out everyone. They still believe that there are people who are benefiting from corrupt money. Because uh, one of the things that the Deputy President said is that the aircraft that are being leased are being overcharged. He said that uh, they are not paying what we call the a common practice. If you look at uh, the lease agreements all over the world, 
this government believes that the Kenyan one is a unique that they are paying it very exorbitantly. But the chairman of the board of directors is defending their position and is saying that what they are paying is the normal standard, the, the international standard of the leasing agreements and he invited uh, the public to go and check the, all the agreements or some of the agreements. So here we are, the workers have down their tools, the people who are supposed to come in and really act in uh, very fast and resolve this do not want because they have a sinister motive. How do we do this, ladies? And gentlemen, because the whole thing is the airline management are wanted out, but those who are uh, rioting and or up down their tools are getting the support of both sides. Why don't they just come up with the solution? They sit down with the Azimio and the Kenya Kwanza to see if they, they can get a solution. But for uh, the, the best thing that must happen, ladies and gentlemen, is for the president to fly back arrange for a quick meeting and this thing will be resolved. If it means kicking out the whole team, I will tell you I will support because going by the losses that KQ keeps on making every day, they will keep on siphoning, you know, taxpayers' money. And on this, for the very first time, I want to support the whole idea that the KQ management are poorly managing that institution and we need a new team to take over. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, I, uh, I want to say that those are my thoughts about the whole saga. I would like to hear much more from you in the comment section. Please share with me what you think. Again, thanks for watching. If you're watching for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. And that's my take. Let's meet in another video.